Hello everyone, Christina Werner here. Welcome to another video for simusstamp.com. Today I am introducing the Waffle Flower Stamp Timber Collaboration Stamp Set, which is called Winter Crystals. This is a six by eight stamp set with lots of fun snowflakes and greetings. I do wanna make a note here. There's, the, there's two greetings that are fused together that uh, it was a manufacturer's error. So if your stamp set comes like this, I'm gonna show you what you need to do. It's super simple and easy. We are going to perform some stamp surgery. <laughs> We're gonna separate these two stamps. So I'm just using some scissors and cutting these apart. There's plenty of space around both of the stamps to do this. In fact, as I cut these apart, there's still kind of a lot of the clear stamp material that might pick up ink. So I'm going to trim it even closer to the greeting to make sure that I don't have any stamp material that picks up ink. So then I can put it back on my stamp sheet, close up that stamp set, and it's as good as new. Easy peasy. Just wanted to tell you guys that just in case your stamp set comes like that. For today's card, I'm going to be doing a little bit of watercoloring with the new Distress watercolor uh, pencils, not crayons, pencils from Tim Holtz and Ranger. So I'm using the watercolor pencil set three. Here are the colors that are included in this tin. And as I was filming this, this was an experiment. I had never used these new Distress watercolor pencils before, and I wanted to give them a fair shot because I traditionally in the past have struggled with watercolor pencils. I sometimes prefer to just go straight to the watercolors, but something really intrigues me about having these colors in the distress line because I know the colors really well and I thought it'd be fun to try them out. So first I colored on the colors very, very lightly because I wanted to see how intense that would be. I uh, added some water with a paintbrush dried it and it was a little pale so I decided to come in with the second layer and I really used a lot of pressure to get that color down there. Now this was a little bit more what I was hoping for where there's more color to work with and move around on my paper. But even as I was moving all of these around, I wanted even more color. So I'm actually going to do um, I think one more layer or maybe even two more layers of color to try to get the intensity that I want. The thing that I really loved about these watercolor pencils is that as I colored and it picked up the texture of the watercolor paper, even though it was kind of falling into those crevices in the watercolor paper, when I added water on top, it was very reactive and it didn't stick and stay in that texture. It actually moved around like paint. It was very unusual. I don't know that I've ever used watercolor pencils that are quite like this and I really kind of love them. So, um, and I just did it on this one simple background. I wasn't doing anything crazy. So I continue to move these around, kind of get the colors to mix a little bit, run them up and down this background. And I love the thicker streaks of color that I got right through the middle there. Now, since this is a Distress product, I wondered if I could sprinkle on water and have it react. I wasn't sure, and so I decided to give it a try. So I, I spritzed on some water into the palm of my hand and then sprinkled it on. And then I'm going to grab a paper towel and pick up the water droplets. And this was really interesting to me. I didn't get much reaction in the upper area where I didn't have quite as much of the pencil. I had more of a reaction over the darker stripe areas. So this just tells me that if you wanna have a reaction like this, you've gotta really lay around those colors and then you can get a reaction. I tested it again just to make sure that my, my theory was correct. And it turns out it is absolutely correct. The area at the top and the lighter green, even though when it's wet, you can see it, you can hardly see it when it's dry, but those darker areas with more paint, you definitely can see it. I love how that looked and it's gonna go perfect with the idea for my card, which is just kind of like a glistening snowflake look. I'm going to be doing a lot of heat embossing on this watercolor background. So before I do any stamping, I wanted to test it out and make sure it was completely dry. 
and it was, so I trimmed it down to an A2 card front. This is four and a quarter by five and a half, and I'm gonna do some stamping. I'm going to arrange all of my stamps over top of this background using a transparency grid sheet, and that's so I can get this greeting perfectly straight and before I start stamping. So I'm placing all of my stamps right on top of that transparency grid, and then I'm going to close my MISTI and transfer the stamps to the door of my MISTI. And it pulls up that transparency grid sheet at the same time. And I can just pull that away, and then I can do my stamping. I'm working on top of a sticky mat inside my MISTI, and that's holding my watercolor background pretty center in that area. I used an anti-static powder tool to prep the area for heat embossing, and then I inked up my stamps with a Versamark ink. I'm gonna press these stamps down, like taking a mental note of the areas that I've pressed with my fingertips because I wanna make sure I get a really good impression this first time around. So as I lift up the door, you can see those clear areas down below. I cleaned off the stamps and I moved them to the other corner and then I stamped that area as well. So I'm going to very carefully remove my watercolor background from that sticky mat. The sticky mat has been used quite a bit so it's lost some of its stick and now it's perfect. So I just peeled back that sticky mat and then I sprinkled on some white embossing powder. This is alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe and I'll tap off the excess and then hit that with my heat tool. And I just held the watercolor background with some tweezers so that I could get that heat tool right up close to where I was holding it. So after everything was melted and, you know, make, make a note in your mind, as soon as you see that powder melted, move along because this is watercolor paper and it will absorb all of that embossing if you let it. I put some uh, adhesive on the back of my watercolor panel. I used Tombow Extreme Adhesive and then I adhered it directly to the front of my card base. I thought it'd be really fun to have some sort of glistening areas on this so I added little dots of glue. This is Gina K Connect glue and then I brought over these little droplets, these kind of iridescent little droplet pieces and I just placed them wherever I had glue. I'm using a Marvy jewel picker to pick these up and then I'm using tweezers to tap it off the jewel picker. And that method worked really, really well for adhering all of these. And I liked having the glue dots down first and then just bringing over the embellishments. It made for a really quick and painless process. This glue will dry completely clear, uh, so it's gonna look great on my finished card. I added a few more little dots just all over the card design using a white jelly roll pen and then that finishes the card for today. Just a reminder that this is a stamp temper collaboration stamp set with waffle flower meaning that once this stamp set sells out it is gone forever. So if you are a snowflake fanatic like I am you might want to pick it up sooner rather than later. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, stay tuned. We'll have even more Stamp Temper collaboration stamp sets coming up. The month is not over. Hi there. I'm Heidi, Simon's mama and founder at simonsaysstamp.com. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you like what you just saw, be sure to press the thumbs up and subscribe to see more great content.